then there's also Isaiah. Again, 700 years before the first Christmas. Isaiah writes, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And it's not just his birth. When Jesus began his ministry in Nazareth, he reads the prophecy of Isaiah 61 there in the synagogue. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor, proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then rolling up that scroll, he says, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus also lives out Isaiah 53 when he goes to the cross. Again, 700 years before that, Isaiah wrote, Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Yes, Christmas is coming. There's no surprise there. But that first Christmas was not a surprise either, at least not a total surprise, because God had promised a Messiah. The prophet said he was coming, and he came, just as God promised. We read these prophecies in Advent because they help us to get ready, not just for Christmas, a date on the calendar, but for a God who keeps his promises. In the end, it's not really going to matter whether or not we found every Christmas present we wanted to get or, or whether we got the tree to look just right or served the perfect Christmas dinner. What will matter is if we learn to trust in God because God isn't finished keeping his promises. Christ will come again. And whether you know and trust in Jesus will make all the difference when you face that day. For some of us, as First Thessalonians reminds us, this meeting with Jesus will take place after we die. We'll see him when we die. No one knows when that will be. For others... We may still be here when Christ returns. And we don't know when that will be either. Jesus himself said, no one knows the day or the hour. But one way or another, every one of us will have the opportunity to meet Jesus and to be with the Lord forever. Will you meet him with faith and trust? Or will that day be a day of fear and trembling? Well, that all depends on how we've prepared are you preparing to be with Jesus? Well, Advent is our chance, our chance to get ready. In preparing for Christmas, we can draw closer to Jesus, and we can look forward to the day that we join him. You know, Advent is full of ways that we can draw closer to Christ. You can make a, a family Advent wreath. And all it takes is four candles or, or five if you, if you add one for Christmas Day. Or how about setting some time aside each day to read a chapter in one of the Gospels that tell us about the life of Jesus? The chapters are rarely more than a page long. And the Gospel of Mark is only 16 chapters, so you could start today and still finish by Christmas. Even uh, Matthew, the longest Gospel, is only 28 chapters. Two pages a day and you'd still beat Santa and his reindeer. Just do something this Advent to make it a holy time of preparing for Jesus. And not just for December 25th. Maybe borrow a page from all those disaster movies. What do all the heroes in the disaster movies do? They run around gathering family and friends and sometimes even complete strangers, and they help them to get ready for what's coming. Well, you could help your friends and family get prepared for Jesus by inviting them to church. There's so many things that are special this month to invite folks to. 
You can invite them to the special Advent celebration next Sunday afternoon with the, the children's program and all the activities. You can invite them to the cantata on the 20th that's here or, or next Sunday up in and, Andover. Or there's the Christmas Eve services and, as well. 4.30 here, big family Christmas Eve service at the 11 o'clock nighttime candlelight service finishing in the very dawn of Christmas. All sorts of ways you could help someone get prepared to meet Jesus by inviting them to one of the special worship services. Or you could simply go to a disaster movie like 2012 and thank God that it is just a movie and give thanks for the prophecies that are real. The prophecies that have already been fulfilled in Jesus Christ and the promises that will be fulfilled when Jesus comes again. For Christ will come again. Whether that happens while we are still living or when we die, one way or another, we shall meet the Lord. And that's all we really need to be ready for. You can get ready for 2012 if you want. But there are no guarantees we'll even make it till then. What is guaranteed is that Jesus is coming. So let's get ready for that this Advent. Let's draw closer to Jesus. Let's love him more deeply, serve him more faithfully, trust him more confidently, and encourage one another with the great promise that we shall be with the Lord forever. Let us pray. Oh God, we don't know what the future holds, but we know that you hold the future. There may be times of great happiness. There may be times of terrible struggle. But in all that we face, we don't face it alone. Because you will be with us. And even when we die, we are not cut off from you. For you will take us to be with you. Oh Lord, help us to prepare this Advent to meet you at any time or in any place. Help us to be ready for you, to prepare our hearts. Come be with us. Make our hearts your home. In Christ's name.